Hey, how are you? Great, uh, Gavin. Thank you very much for taking the time this morning. I appreciate it. No problem. In doing okay, my uh, my my preparation for this interview, uh, and I, I wasn't aware of the beef between you and Dave Grohl, which doesn't really exist anymore. But I, I we're the same age. I was I went through the '90s not knowing that. Then again, I was not of sound mind or sober mind through the '90s, so I may have missed something there. <laughs> But I never knew that that's that's something that existed. And but you guys have ironed that out, apparently, right? Oh my god, it it was a momentary. <clears throat> it was at the beginning, and yeah, it was it was very short lived. It's just difficult because this was not part of the. I was speaking to NME, and he's just like you do these like very nice interviews. He's actually a really likable person. We we had a good time, and then. It just the way they cut those pieces together. Like, I never read those things, and 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 somebody sent it to me, and I thought, let me have a look. How they're, and it's just sort of like butchered editing where all tone is lost. And so all I was saying was, actually, that I was a massive uh, fan of of you know how great I thought that both Trent and Dave were. And it's ironic because back in the day when we began, they here they asked me about that that uh, situation when I first met Dave. 95 or something. It's just like, it's like it's crawling. We have um, kids in the same, three daughters, three sons. We're at the same school. So I, I'm good with Dave. I recorded my drums at his studio last time. So it was like, it was a weird thing to take. And then that was in the main bit of the article. It's like, oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so it was very, uh, it was very, it was very old school. In and of itself, it felt a very dated concept of like, you know, just withdrawing the kind of, I don't know. Well, I thought that was interesting. I, I never knew that was a thing, and he was allegedly saying well, that it wasn't. You, that's what I mean. It wasn't yeah. the way that it's the way that it's written. You think it was? It was when we, you know, it was just you, we were annoying. We came out and we were very successful, and people would want us to know, you know, what the fuck anyone would. <laughs> well, it's it's uh, now it's been I can't believe it thirty years since the first album. 16 stone and you're at the point where there's a like a a collection of music from your uh from your career loaded uh from 94 to to 2023 and what i want to ask you about is your recollections of working on actually going into working on a razor blade suitcase because that must have been a very challenging time you're you're coming off of the massive success of 16 stone you guys got famous very quickly, which can kill some bands or has literally killed some people. And then you're working with Steve Albini, who you had expressed your admiration for the Pixies several times. And he can be, well, his reputation is, um, the right, I want to use the right word here, he can, he can be cantankerous at times. With all that thrown into the mix and the pressure to follow up and everything, you know, was, was that a challenging time for you and, and the rest of the band? Um, you know, it was a, it was a vital, vibrant time and we're going through some stuff and, you know, people were kind of mad at us for being successful. And it was like, um, it was in some ways, you know, it's better to be the eye of the storm than sort of just watching it from the beach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I wouldn't change it. How was it working with with uh, Steve Albini? Because I I remember at that time one of the things I remember from the nineties you expressing your love for for the Pixies and and Surfer Rosa was that a, was that a good experience? It was an incredible experience. You know, um, it, in retrospect, you know, I've I've often said that like I could have been playing stadiums if I just repeated Sixteen Stone backwards or something like that. You know, and uh, I think it was a really um, at both, um, it was a very young decision. It was brilliant because it was really, really adventurous and brave. Because um, you know, people would, you know, it's like the, the fact that the label didn't want to manicure a record and take the time. And you know, Steve is famous for sort of, you know, two-hour mixes and things like that. You know, on a on a slow day. So it was weird because when, when I got to studio, I thought he's going to be running everywhere. <laughs> really, yeah. like so over efficient that we had to run. Um, and it wasn't like that at all. We had a fantastic time. I love him, and we had a great, we had a really good time. He's just very, he's just no nonsense. So it's like, as long as you don't, it's it's like, it's like disingenuity, I think, for him is probably, he's not one of those people that can hold it in. <laughs> so yeah. I think that, if you're, you know, it's like a dog sniffing you out. Like, if you have stuff, if you're a dick, he's going to 
knows the person that you are, I think. And um, I've stayed friends with him um, for all this time. He's super cool. And uh, he just has a certain way of making music. And you either like that way or you don't. Like, for me, I love him. I respect him massively. Um, he, has a, he has a total blind spot about um, uh, experimentation in the studio. You know, he's much more, he comes from schools, like, by the hour. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, he's he's um, uh, you know he's from the do-it-yourself. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's like everyone else. Main people had records. People had jobs to go to. Most of the people who call with Steve, it's a very you know egalitarian thing. They kind of a lot of them have got jobs and things like that. You know what I mean? And so for him, the idea of experimenting a studio or trying this or trying that is just not his school of thought. You know, um, when I once did um. Yeah, yeah. I said to him, uh, "Hey, I want to put a harmony on this part." He goes, well, "Did you think about it when you're writing? Was it compositionally intended?" I was like, "Ooh, uh, uh, yeah, like Pinocchio, you know." I was like <laughs> thinking, "Let's just try and make it sound better. What's, what's wrong with you?" And, um, <laughs> and then, uh, so I did it. Sounded, you know, it was just a third above. It's a really standard thing in music, you know, just make the chorus a little, give it a little lift. And I looked on the the, the line sheet and had pointless harmony. <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. It's brilliant. But so what? I, you know, I mean, so what? Uh, and but it, the pointless harmony stayed. I nearly. I was going to call Razorblade Suitcase pointless harmony. Oh, that would have been amazing. <laughs> yeah, funny. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's stupid because I just. I and now I'm older and wiser and a better lyricist. I totally would have done it. Well, then I was just like, ooh. Because I didn't see the, the the value of irony, so I was like, "Pointless Harmony" would have been a great title for anything. <laughs> but um, but uh, it's all it's all good, it's all good. Razor blade suitcase, you know, that's not bad. Well, uh, going over this collection, it's it's uh it's really uh, amazing how after Sixteen Stone, each album following that, up until that first break you guys uh, took, it was their own little planets in themselves almost, and it it kind of well, reminds me of the way Neil Young like kind of approached his career after harvest because he said he kind of ended up in the middle of the road. Well, I'm just going to drive myself into the ditch. And he made like three of the best albums he's ever made. And did you ever feel like that? Like, okay, we've, we've got to this point. And like you said, I could have made 16 stone over and over again. Did you ever feel oh. like you were fighting with your past? Like, Hey, this is us now we're evolving. And you didn't feel like you wanted to play the stuff from 16 stone. Yeah, to an extent, you know, but it was, they had this weird, uh, beautiful irony to it that is the very thing from 16 Stone that's got us there. And I, in fact, had a wild, almost an epiphany on stage because we incorporated way more. I'm always obsessed about playing the new stuff and it's to everyone else. It's like, we can't play this, you know, like throw it in there in the, in the, in the dressing room before we go on. I'm like, okay, but, you know, because... I love it so much that I don't want to stop. And so I have this sort of twisted concept that if I find myself, you know, just being pure nostalgia, playing just older songs and not, you know, I've got number one songs from last week, you know, this new one's number 20 at the radio. It's like I'm still in it. So I've always been really reluctant to do that simply because of that. I didn't want to look like I was sitting in an armchair on stage and just kind of phoning in playing the hits, which is just thought, don't be that, you know, just keep climbing, you know, keep going for it. And that's what I've done. And then last night we turned, we relented a bit because of the fact of doing the um, the greatest hits, right? We mm -hmm. relented and mm -hmm. we gave the beginning and the opening um, uh, much more uh, to do with that. And, and, it, and it grew into that. And it, it actually, I got to say, um, I was like thinking, have I been wrong all along? <laughs> I was doing this when I was watching the audience. I was like, this is really good. They really like it. I think I got this wrong. Do you know what I mean? Come on, I'm going to play this new track that's so heavy and going to freak you out. It's like, well, it's so unknown it's going to freak us out. <laughs> so I, I don't know. So, you know, life is it's always that funny balance of like, you know, some things you get right, some things you don't. I think the bottom line is that as long as. Um, you play it like you mean it. You just, I, I, I generally get through things. Generally, I think people would probably prefer a couple more songs like we're doing now. So it's probably at our most audience considerate, even though the whole thing is based on the audience, if that makes any sense. No, no, yeah. It's like, yeah. okay, I really did open with, a, like, I think Zen into Machine Head, and it just made the <laughs> things go nuts. I was like, 
<laughs> mm, interesting point. You know, I was like, yeah. I thought I'd come out and they'd be, you know, because I'm mainly scared about some of, you know, people going, okay, stop, stop, stop. We've heard this. What else you got? You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and as you go through this this greatest hits collection, it's it's I love hearing that start at sixteen stone the the way you evolved the sound and and uh, and then the way you kind of came back to yeah. mostly guitars and the thickly I love I love I'm a sucker for thickly layered guitars like a big gooey yeah. guitar lasagna oh, wow. you know so yeah. your last few records yeah. I've I've really loved yeah, yeah. Um, which me too and that's it's a weird uh, weird thing where I've got to so I. So it's funny, but I noticed it actually yesterday, last night, the first time <coughs> when I was playing. <coughs> it felt like um, a biography because I was going through the songs from the beginning. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. then I was like working my throat way through. And then after I played Swallow, I was like, I played Swallow like five or six. And I was like, okay, I've done everything everybody wants, but I really, and then suddenly it was like a new song off the of quick stand. It's not a single, not the greatest hit. Probably not the right song to play in some ways, but the perfect tempo and the perfect um, energy to yeah. just lift up and then go into other stuff. And it was just, it was just wild because they were all um, complaints from different eras. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, you can't it's, please it's, everybody, it's, right? <laughs> we're just not. You know, I very, I make very issue-driven music, personal issue-driven. So you know, like when things aren't going your way or. You know, I think that, that um, it's weird because you have to have this sort of oval thing like, why do I make songs that always kind of lean on the side of, of kind of like challenge, you know, like mini movies because it's like um, setting, you know, um, location is like a verse set up and then it's all about um, the uh, where you can go, like the solution. Like I don't make nihilist. I've never been a nihilist. I'm like a super optimist but i'm like often kind of like worried about things yeah. and kind of challenged by things so it's finding that that balance in life and um you know that's what the ancient greeks did right they had tragedy they had tragedy so that um so that the people wouldn't freak out at their lives being painful you know right. that's why they yeah. used to put the plays on they put the plays on of suffering so that people would um be like oh well, if they're suffering, that's just because life is suffering as well. Right. So, there's some, you know, it's all in there. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's why I was drawn to music was because uh, I was hearing bands who were singing about things that I was thinking about, and I, it felt it brought me a little solace because I, I knew I wasn't alone in thinking those things. Exactly. Yeah, which is great. I got one more question because we got to wrap it up here. Uh, of all your songs. What was the one song you? What is the one one song you wish you could have included on Loaded on this latest collection? Oh, well, there's missing four songs missing, four hits missing. So those would <clears throat> I'd like to have those, and they promised me I can have a deluxe of that. Right. But, um, uh, I mean, I'm just working on the. I've begun on the, the new record for for next year, and uh, like that. Seven, six or seven songs, very important number. Wow. <laughs> because as a songwriter, we really, really, really need uh, numbers. <laughs> I just feel confident that, that things are moving in the right direction because they're seven legit songs. And I'm also thinking of doing a uh, redoing because I, I re- you, you mentioned Neil Young, but yeah. I want to do um, a song. I'm going to do a song from the Institute record. Oh, okay. Because it's a really fantastic record. Only the kind of Cognoscenti, you know, the, those in on the inside, in inside the circle of trust, know about their record. So it's a bit of a an unknown record apart from relatively very very few people. Nice to see that growing up. I'd be like, you know, Dylan or, or Neil Young, they record the same song over three records, like or with a huge wingspan in between. I just decide to record that song, and it's when I when I got. R- went down this rabbit hole that we both really like of those syrupy detuned guitars mm-hmm. is because I played all those festivals and every time I was playing a festival with every sort of heavy band I was cherry picking all the detuned songs off of every record and then I was like oh man I wish I could just play the institute that will that will shut these metal heads up and um <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then, uh, and then, uh, and then I'm like, why? You know, why did so? I thought, why? Why do I do this thing where I sort of, you know, separate it? So I just decided to write everything, um, detuned from there on in, 
and that gave me the me- means that wherever I go, it's syrupy and heavy. And uh, can, I can be on any stage. We played to play with Lamb of God. We just played with Slipknot. You know, it's not you can't do that if I only can play the regular songs. Right. Um, you know, <laughs> and it's a bit hard. I used to do it, but it was like well up there in challenging. Yeah. Well, Gavin, uh, thank you so much again for taking the time to speak with uh, speak with me this morning, and and uh, I'm enjoying the collection and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys on tour, uh, especially over here at the Providence Performing Arts Center. It's going to be on next Tuesday. But thank you very much. Good luck for uh, the rest of the tour too, and good luck on the new the new stuff. Yeah. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.